coming up this week on the center of it all. Cold weather means staying warm with the right comfort food. We show you a restaurant that is hoping to do just that. And with the holiday season coming up, local towns are starting to host more festivals. We check out one and see how it's bringing the community together. Mel shares the perfect dessert to curl up with by the fire, and our pet of the show is looking for either an adoption or a foster home. Good morning, welcome to the center of it all. A local favorite cafe is looking to tweak their menu this holiday season with the help of a new head chef. We sat down with him to see what he plans on bringing to the table. We hit it off and meshed quickly, you know, because we have the same food philosophy, you know, which is local sourcing, you know, good ingredients, educating people about food. And when it comes to food, Blick has been educating and cooking for 25 years. Blick grew up with good meals and recipes thanks to his mom and grandma. And that warm southern style family cooking is something he incorporates into his own cooking style today. But he says the food industry has changed since then. Food industry over the past 50, 60 years, it's become very disconnected from it. You know, we, we don't know where pork chops come from. You know, we, we don't know who grows them. But that is something that Blick hopes to change this season at the Elk Creek Cafe, having the farm to table concept be a more dominant element in the menu. Farm to table concept is a movement that serving local food to restaurants coming from local food producers. Blick says that right now, pretty much everything Elk Creek Cafe uses in their dishes comes from within a half hour radius. The challenge is how do we do this more? You know, how, how, how do we do this farm to the table thing, sustainable thing, um, feed people and give them an experience that, that is, you know, in the truest sense the word almost romantic you know it's you know feeding people is really intimate part of it is just developing relationship with the farmer and explaining to the farmer what you're after you know what because they grow vast quantities and sell bulk so we want smaller quantities you know it's just a relearning for everyone along with relearning they plan on organizing and updating the dishes they do already have on the menu that are loved by so many people in the community. Blick says he doesn't want to take away from the menu, but add and broaden it instead. I've walked into a kitchen of like absolute awesome, you know, technical cooks, you know, so, so a lot of times what I bring is just simply ideas and they're, they're from, you know, practice and failure, you know, quite often. So we're, we're just moving in that direction more, you know, and we're going to change up some of the food so it's not all bar or oriented and um, you know see if we can feed more people. And the people in Milheim and the surrounding areas seem to be responding well to his new ideas. I believe they're into it. I mean when I came here before it was open and even you know now that I am here um, it's pretty hopping. I mean, they're surrounded by farms. How, how can it not, after a certain amount of time, make sense? You know, it's like I don't have to, you know, worry about what what chemicals are, are in my, you know, poultry or whatever because I know that guy. You know, I, I can see it. You know, and that's a pretty neat advantage. Blick says the major push behind the farm to table movement isn't just about the good local food. It's also about educating people on where their food comes from, what's in it, and what's not in it. And though that will increase the price, it's a small amount to pay for a cleaner meal. Sitting at the plate, it, it, it costs more because you're paying for more. You, you're paying for a, a known source. You, you're paying for no anti Biotics, no hormones. You're paying for uh, for humane treatment of animals. You're paying for craftsmen. But the point is, the the quality goes up exponentially. Elk Creek Cafe recently held an event to officially introduce Blick as the new head chef and the new ideas he has to offer to this small but popular cafe. And he says this is just the beginning. Went well. I was in the kitchen. I mean, I didn't. We didn't hear too many complaints, so that was good. We want to 
get to the point where anything we make at all, people will eat because they trust us completely. For a full list of their menu and their hours, visit their website at elkcreekcafe.com. When we come back, we check out a town that is using the arts to bring their community together. Welcome back. With November here, that means the holidays are fast approaching and more and more communities are hosting festivals. We check out one just a couple towns away to see how they are using it to bring their community together. It's a small town about an hour away, perfect for a family day trip getaway. Lewisburg is quaint and cozy, perfect for the chilly winter days ahead. And they started their holiday season with a walk through downtown. Stroll through the arts and we started I think this is our 19th year that we've been doing this with the idea that people can see the artists and meet the artists themselves. So artists will come and be in the businesses and restaurants throughout downtown Lewisburg. And we have added this year some music too. So it's a stroll through the arts and dance to the music. Kelly says the fall and holiday season is the perfect time to go out and get involved with your community because it's a time to spend with your family, friends, and meet new people. I think as we're getting into the, part of it's the holiday season and part of it is as the light gets shorter and the days get shorter, there's that sense of kind of coziness and togetherness that people really want. Uh, you can see that anytime you go to any of the fall festivals and the pumpkin patches, they are full of people. And downtown Lewisburg was also full of people during a warm evening, all coming together for one thing, to support local businesses and the arts. It's important that people realize that the art is part of our everyday lives. Uh, I don't think we would have as good a quality of life without the arts, and that's general. That's visual arts, that's performing arts, it's music, it's theater, it's poetry. We have all of those things happening this week. Um, I think people really like getting up close to the artists. They forget sometimes that it's their friends and neighbors who are the artists and that is pretty exciting. Brings them a little closer to the art that they might have in their homes. Kelly says the holiday season is the perfect time to go out in your own community or even communities you may not be familiar with and support the small local businesses around you because that's what keeps small towns alive and running. We would be much the poorer if local people were not in business. If all of our shopping was done at the big box stores, think of all the jobs alone that would that we would lose, um, but people are following their passions and you're going to get better customer service, you'll often get better products, they might be a little more expensive, but you're paying the salaries of your next door neighbor by doing it that way. Uh, and it just, I think the customer service is a big piece of it. If you are looking for something in particular and you know the local shopkeeper, they're going to help you do your shopping, you're going to end up with a much better experience, it's going to be more fun for you and you're going to get better things for um, the, the people that you're buying presents for. Um, and I think that's true in every community. It's not just Lewisburg. Uh, but I think just supporting the small town businesses can make a big difference in any community. A more local, personal touch seems to be what people are going for this year. Similar to the Emporia Market, a store that is built with gifts, food, and art, all from local people that is now open in the Nittany Mall. These small town holiday events is the perfect way to see what is around your home and your own community. I mean, part of it, if you're not from Lewisburg, it's a really beautiful way to see the town. I and mean, we have, we think we have a really beautiful town. We have a lot of restored buildings. It's a lot of Victorian architecture um, and a lot of, and it's busy. It isn't falling apart. It is, all of the, the shops are full. The stroll began in the evening when the sun began to set because that dark and comforting atmosphere was something they wanted as part of the event. It happens in the dark because it starts at 6 o'clock, but all of the businesses and restaurants that participate have luminaria out front, so you're following the candles down the street, which really does feel very warm and cozy when it's starting to get cooler. Most of the merchants have food, a lot of them have hot chocolate or wine or you know something else so that you really it does feel like a big party. While this event is done for another year there are plenty of things coming up in the next few weeks that can bring your family and a new community together this holiday season. First week of Lewis of December is the late night shoppers which is a Friday night and that is uh, I think the stores are open until midnight which is really fun and even the weekend before Lewisburg does a lot for 
um, Small Business Saturday and even for Black Friday. So there are shopping discounts every one of those weekends. For more information on their upcoming events, visit LewisburgArtsCouncil.com. When we come back, Mel is preparing the perfect treat to keep you warm with this chilly weather. Welcome back to the center of it all. Even though it isn't December or Christmas yet, it is never too early for cookies and eggnog. Just ask Mel. Preheat your ovens, get out your baking pans, and measure those ingredients. We're baking cookies today. I've been buying my milk and ice cream at Myers Dairy since I moved to Happy Valley in 1974. I love this place. It's family friendly and they support a host of local businesses too. One of my favorite things about Myers Dairy is their eggnog and it starts showing up in their dairy case just about this time of year. In fact, I like it so much, I've invented a cookie to use it. You know what I call them? Mel's Happy Valley Myers Dairy Eggnog Cookies. Let's get started. The secret to making really good eggnog cookies, meaning to make them really taste like eggnog, is you gotta make sure you use the right spices and flavorings, the traditional ones. That means I'm seasoning my flour with a good dose of nutmeg and cinnamon, and I'm stirring some rum extract and vanilla extract into my eggnog. In my mixing bowl, I've got a half a cup of white sugar, half a cup of brown sugar, a stick and a half of unsalted butter, and two extra large egg yolks. With my mixer on low speed, I'm just going to start, don't start low to begin with. And work your way up to a higher speed. I'm going to cream. This is called creaming the eggs, butter, and sugar. And I'm just going to try to keep it all at the bottom of the mixture bowl by scraping it down almost constantly with a spatula. Now that it's creamy, I can up the mixture speed and really let this cream up for a good minute or two. That's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to lower my mixer speed again. This is barely moving. And I'm going to pour all of my seasoned eggnog mixture into that. Well, you can smell the rum flavoring. And once it's kind of stirred in. Again, we're going to up that mixture speed. And this really has to get creamed together. Now I'm kind of whipping this for just a moment or two. And once again, lower the mixture speed. And I'm going to start adding my seasoned flour, but I'm not going to throw it in or dump it in all at once. You don't need to measure it, but it's best if you do it in two or three um, increments or three parts, a third, a third, and a third, so that you can slowly get it in and the reason you're doing this in parts is because it gives you the opportunity to really scrape the bottom and the sides of the bowl to make sure that the flour is all getting stirred in and not sticking on the sides of your bowl. Okay, so that's the first one. That's our second one. Now our cookie batter is beginning to form. It's a batter right now. It's not quite a dough because it's not thick enough to be a dough. And 
And now our last. That's flour. And with this last one, you really, really want to make sure that you've done a real good job of getting all of the flour incorporated. And the only other thing I'll say to you, you can see I'm using a handheld electric mixer to do this. This recipe doubles and triples really well, but if you're going to make more than one batch at a time, I really suggest you get out your stand mix mixer, your KitchenAid or your Cuisinart with the paddle attachment, because a small hand mixer like this really won't handle the weight of this dough if it's a double batch. Well, that looks about perfect. I'm just gonna clear my blades a little bit here. Turn my mixer off. I'm gonna scrape all of this down, clear off my beaters. I'm gonna transfer my dough to a small container and I'm gonna place it in the refrigerator for one hour to stiffen, to chill it before we bake our cookies. I've lined two of my biggest baking pans with parchment paper and I've been using a one and three quarter inch ice cream ice cream scoop to measure my dough into even well-rounded balls and place them on the pans. And I'm here to tell you that this dough, if you use a one and a three quarter inch ice cream scoop, is going to make exactly 24 cookies. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of these pans and I'm going to put them on a shelf in my refrigerator to chill again for 15 to 20 minutes before I bake them at 350 degrees for exactly 13 minutes. My cookies are baked and cooled, and I'm gonna start frosting them, but first, I have to make the frosting. So I've put two cups of confectioner's sugar in a bowl, and I've added four tablespoons of the eggnog and I'm going to follow this up with a full tablespoon of rum extract. This is actually butter rum extract. I'm going to stir this. It takes a couple of minutes to do this. Confectioner's sugar just it just melts with the liquid when the liquid hits it. Just keep stirring and be patient. going to get all smooth and drizzly. It takes about less than a minute, you can see already. Smooth and drizzly. And you could, technically you could use this to frost your cookies, but I don't use it quite yet. I like to cover mine and let it sit for about 30 minutes, and sometimes even overnight because then you're really sure that every last little bit of confectioner's sugar has totally melted in and you get a real ribbony consistency and that is exactly what you want your frosting to look like. My frosting's all rested and it working in batches of six. I'm just gonna pick up my cookies I do not like a lot. Some people might want to dip the top of the cookies in this frosting, but I don't like to do that because then I just get crumbs in my frosting. I think that's annoying. Just one at a time. This really isn't going to drip very much. I like to take my time so they look really pretty. Well, that's six. And the reason I'm working in batches of six is because this frosting hardens and you want it to harden. You really want them to get a nice little bit of a crunchy glaze. But by the time I get done with six, it's still wet enough that I can Sprinkle ever so lightly a little bit of ground nutmeg 
one of the traditional flavors. We've got the rum in the frosting, the nutmeg on the top. Just a little bit. And remember, nutmeg is very intense, so you really just want to give it just a little bit of a sprinkle. And then I'm going to let these sit on the rack for an hour or two or three or four so that that frosting really hardens up before I put them on my cookie tray and serve them. About the only thing that tastes better than a Happy Valley Meyer Dairy eggnog cookie is a Happy Valley Meyer Dairy eggnog cookie served with Meyer Dairy eggnog. Don't believe me? Just ask Santa. For these and all of my recipes, just go to my website. Now, I have to say I actually am not a big eggnog drinker, but I can say that those cookies still paired perfectly with a nice warm cup of hot chocolate. When we come back, we introduce you to our furry and loving pet of the show. Welcome back. If you are looking for the perfect companion to snuggle up with by the fire with Mel's cookies and eggnog, Ninny Beagle Rescue could have the perfect solution for you. Let's see who Sam has for this week's pet of the show. Thanks, Alicia. I'm here with Bindi Sue. We just call her Bindi for short. She's a two-year-old female. She's pretty high energy, but she's a two-year-old, so she's still very playful. She's still got that two-year-old energy, so she'll definitely calm down as she gets older. She's a pretty small beagle. She's only about 20 pounds. She has really big, floppy, soft ears, and she's very sweet. She likes to hug and she likes to cuddle, but she also likes to play a lot. So we're hoping to find her a home with someone that can handle a pretty high-energy dog. She's um, uh, either a fence or someone who could walk her a lot and maybe run with her would be really good. She's good with kids. She's good with other dogs. She really loves people and she likes to play fetch and play with the frisbee and stuff. So someone that could really take the time and and play with her a lot would be really good. That wraps up this week's Center of It All. Thanks so much for joining me. Be sure to check our Facebook page for any episodes you may have missed. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. <laughs>